Praise the Lord. Good morning, Shiloh Baptist Church. Good morning, Shiloh family and friends. We do indeed thank God for another opportunity to worship the Lord our God together online. Hallelujah. Come on, just take a minute and consecrate your space. Come on, invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God right there in your living room, in your kitchen, wherever you're viewing us this morning. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He has gotten us through another month allowed us to see a new day thank you jesus for the start of even a brand new month and he's given us all that we stand in need of even to make it through the end of this year father in the name of jesus the christ give us what we stand in need of to keep on pressing and persevering down through the end of these 12 months we're in the 11th month now thank you god for bringing us this far and never leaving us and so god i'm asking even in the few days, God, that change will happen across this land. I thank you in the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. In the name of Jesus, I'm also asking that, God, you would touch each and every individual who is, who is viewing us this morning, that they might feel your presence and might know that you're near. I thank you, God, for what you have in store for us in this service and certainly on this day and even the rest of the life you've so gifted us with. So, God, have your way even right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. And we all said amen amen welcome everybody welcome to sunday morning service i'm pastor rob cheeks the senior servant here at shallow baptist church Audrick's corner i uh, wanted to encourage all of our missions ministry team this is mission and outreach day to all of our mission mission ministry team all of our outreach teams to all of you connected to shallow serving um, in various capacities that to make a difference in our community local and abroad god bless you today is your day we wanted to acknowledge you and to thank you for all that you have done and all that you continue to do and so we just want to ask the lord's blessings over the continued work in and through your life to be a blessing to somebody else it is the season that god is using us to reach somebody else to make a difference and to draw them closer to him in a relationship that is the love relationship that is real and personal through christ jesus praise the lord come on let's just thank god for all of our mission ministries all of our outreach ministries to all of the servant leaders um to our associate pastors who work in these areas i thank god for each and every one of them and all that they continue to do god bless you and your sacrifice your dedication you have been a blessing to the ministries of shallow and certainly to all of those that we have allowed the lord to reach through even our lives and so god bless you we have a special gift on today special guest one and who indeed i am indeed grateful uh, for sharing with us today and so church it's preaching time it's time for the word of god somebody go ahead and post and comment say it's word time it's word time we do indeed have a preacher in the house and i am delighted that he is sharing with us today this is the senior pastor of first baptist church maryfield none other than the reverend dr paul anthony shepherd hallelujah he is here he has been thoroughly prepared and equipped for the gospel 
gospel ministry and certainly in to serve in the office of the pastorate. And I'm so delighted to have had opportunity to meet him and share with him before the pandemic and have conversation of trying to plan opportunities to grow both ministries together that we can be introduced uh, formally to one another. But this is the opportunity that Shallow has to get to know Pastor Shepard. Um, so as I mentioned, he's been thoroughly equipped. He's received degrees from Howard University, from uh, Wilbur Wilbur H. Waters School of Theology and Seminary. He's pastored in Hampton, Virginia. He's pastored in uh, Georgia. Uh, he's pastored here now in Northern Virginia. We do indeed welcome him and his family. Uh, we do indeed thank God for this privileged opportunity. So church, it's word time. It's time to hear from God. And as we're praying for ourselves to receive exactly what God has in store for us, that we would not just be hearers of the word, that we would be doers of the word. But we're also praying for Pastor Shepherd that God would use him mightily, pour back into him, and prepare him not only for this assignment, but for the next assignment, and all the work God has called him to. So Pastor Shepherd, we thank you for coming and sharing with us to the Shepherd family. God bless you into First Baptist. God bless you as well. All right, church, let's hear the word of the Lord and what he has in store for us on this Mission and Outreach Celebration Day as we celebrate each and every one of our servants serving in this capacity. God bless you. Let's hear the word of God. sisters, we bring you greetings from the First Baptist Church in Maryfield. And I'm so delighted, amen, to come before you, the Shadow Baptist Church, under your esteemed pastor, Robert Cheek. We thank God for you on this mission day, on this mission Sunday. And we are certainly delighted, amen, to be able to give a word from the Lord. If you have your Bibles with you, I want to look at the gospel according to St. Matthew, Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, and we will be reading verses 35 through 41. Matthew chapter 25, verses 35 through 41. Let us have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day on this Mission Sunday. Lord, we thank you for the Shiloh Baptist Church Lord, continue, Lord, to bless them. Lord, as they move forward in ministry, we thank God for their existence and their and for their light being, Lord, their, their shining light in the midst of this community. Lord, this is your word. We pray for your spirit and your presence. In the name of Jesus, we say amen. I will be reading from the New English translation, the New English, the New English translation, Matthew chapter. Uh, 25 verses 35 through 41 it reads as thus for i was hungry and you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me something to drink i was a stranger and you invited me in i was naked and you gave me clothing i was sick and you took care of me i was in prison and you visited me then the righteous were answer him lord when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or naked and you clothed me? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, I tell you the truth, just as you did it for me, for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he was saying to those on his left, depart from me, you are cursed into the eternal fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen. Matthew chapter 25, verse, verses 25 through 41. My brothers and sisters, I want to tag this text this morning. The mission is still the same. The mission is still the same. Every so often, the church must be reminded on occasion of its mission and the purpose of its existence. The moment we forget our mission is the moment that the church fails and aborts its mission. Here we are in 2020, confronted with endless challenges, disturbing circumstances, in a society that has rejected the laws and commands of God. Our duty as a church 
It is not to keep our religion to ourselves, but we are commanded to go out into a dying world and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. One wise man once said, uh, he who lives like Christ wins men to Christ. My brothers and sisters, our pews are filled with hurting and broken people of all sorts. It is no secret that these United States, or should I say divided states, need a spiritual transformation. Political turbulence, economic uncertainty, voter suppression, social unrest, rhetorical garbage spewing from the lips of an unfit president, the absence of morality, a virus that's causing havoc in our communities, police brutality, and systemic racism that is crippling our communities. My brothers and sisters, we live in a fluent <clears throat> and ever-changing culture where things change constantly to meet the ever-changing demands of the world. We can purchase <clears throat> the latest technological gadget today, but only to become obsolete tomorrow because of something newer, brighter, and more sufficient has been discovered. Our values change, our mores change, our thinking changes, our philosophy changes, our attitudes change, and our worldview changes. But as we look on the theological landscape of human irrelevancy, there is one thing that will never change, and that is God's word. Methodologies will change, but the mission, mandate, and message will always remain the same. As a contemporary church and society, as the contemporary church and society address the plights, the pain, the ills, and the hurts of a hurting and fractured humanity, the mission and message are still the same. We must feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, provide housing to the stranger, clothe the naked, visit the sick, and visit the incarcerated. These mandates are what we call the social gospel. Feeding the hungry is a social gospel. Clothing the naked is a social gospel. Visiting the incarcerated is a social gospel. Clothing the naked is a social gospel. Meeting the needs of the poor, the marginalized, the subjugated, and the disenfranchised, and the disinherited is a social gospel gospel. The mandate in Matthew 25 verses 35 to 41 to 46 is clearly and cogently a social gospel slash mission that must be practiced by all Christians. It is one that can be summed up by the great theologian John Wesley where he said, quote, do all you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all, the, and at all times you can, to all people you can, as long as you can, unquote. Now can I give you the shepherd's spin? Here it is. Do what you can with what you have where you are. See, the social gospel narrative is one that does not diminish or cheapen the salvific nature of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It only enhances it. The social gospel motif centers on Christian ethics relating to social injustices such as economic inequality, poverty, crime, racial tensions, systemic racism, social inequities, substandard living, unclean environments, food deserts, poor schools, sexism, ageism, and classism. See, the social gospel objective is to eliminate the proliferation of pervasive poverty, to end the unjust practices of redlining and racial gerrymandering, to rid society of white privilege, and to promote the idea of spreading love and not hate. In the words of colleague Dr. Jeffrey Gonsdale in Norfolk, Virginia, 
where he says where the poor are treated equally, where poor children are given the same educational opportunities as wealthy children, where the poor are not taken advantage of by unscrupulous businessmen and businesswomen, where blacks have an equal chance to serve in influential positions and not just the good boys, unquote. My brothers and sisters, we must eradicate the two judicial systems in America where there is justice for them and one just for us. Now, from a theological, from a Christian perspective, as it relates to the idea of a social gospel, one can point to the central figure in the person of Jesus Christ who lived in one of history's most corrupt societies. In the, pro in the proclamation of the gospel, Jesus never issued any call for political change. He did not come to earth to be a political savior. The gospel Jesus preached had nothing to do with political affiliations and or political change. Rather than attempt to change governments and institutions which are made up of people, Jesus came to change, watch this, people's hearts and point them to God's kingdom. He preached the saving power of the gospel and the transforming work of the Holy Spirit. In essence, in essence, if the gospel can change your heart, then loving and helping people would never be a social issue. Regardless of one's political affiliation, race, creed, gender, or ethnic background, we ought to help a hurting humanity. Wherever there is a human need, there is an opportunity for kindness and love to be exercised and for one to make a difference. Uh, every one of us, every one of us can make a difference in somebody's life. Your job, our job, my job is not to reach everybody, but we can and ought to reach somebody. And, and let's be real, let's be real. We can't do everything, but we can do something. In, 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 in the inspirational and sagacious words of Helen Keller, uh, she says this quote, I am only one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I would not refuse to do something that I can do, unquote. My brothers and sisters, we all, we all can do something. We, we, can, we can no longer ill afford to stand on the sidelines and do nothing. We all must be prophetic voices of change. Jesus himself demonstrated true Christian love by helping the despised and the victims of injustice. He showed deep compassion for the poor, the sick, the dispossessed, and the outcasts of society. Jesus, out of love, healed them and delivered them physically, emotionally, and socially. Social justice is predicated on the concepts of human rights and equality. The Word of God supports and undergirds social justice with regards to the plight of the poor and the afflicted. He cares for the orphans. He cares for the widows and people unable to support themselves. His ministry is centered on the least of these. The least of these is a central tenet of the gospel. James chapter 1 verse 27 makes it crystal clear the purpose of our religion. He says this quote, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspited from the world. But my brothers and sisters, may I submit to you that the mission is to meet human needs from a sociological and spiritual perspective, and it is not relegated for the elite. It is not designed for the fortunate. It is not an exclusive club for the wealthy. It is not built for fraternities or sororities, nor is it a social clique for the snobbish or the stuck up. But the mission is for the person who truly possess the love of God in their hearts and for those who genuinely love God's people unconditionally. 
But in our text this morning, Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46, Jesus teaches about the judgment of nations. He says that when he comes in his glory with all the angels, he will sit on his throne and all nations will be gathered before him. Yeah, then he will separate them. Those who are classified as sheep on the right of those who are sensitive uh, to the pain and angst of others, and those who were in, those who were insensitive to others to other suffering will be designated as goats on the left. God will separate His obedient followers from the pretenders and unbelievers. The real and authentic evidence of our belief is the way we treat and act towards others. Jesus lists several requirements uh, for would-be sheep, those who seek to enter his kingdom. They, they are asked to feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, take in strangers, clothe the naked, tend to the sick, and visit those who are in prison. Okay, allow me to put it in this in, in this in this contemporary perspective. Here it is: we are commanded to feed the homeless walking around Northern Virginia, clothing those who can't afford to shop at Texans of Galleria, uh, visit those who are temporarily housed in the Fairfax County Jail, those who are being evicted from their homes due to this ugly pandemic, become a mentor to those students who are virtually and academically challenged. Be proactive to bring about economic change to those families who live in substandard conditions without adequate health care and children who are looked down upon because of their impoverished conditions. We must help and support the least of these because the mission is still the same. These words of Jesus form the basis of the frequently criticized social gospel motif. Some Christians believe that the church must detach herself from this social model, but concentrate only on winning souls. But Jesus reminds us in Matthew 25, verses 35 through 41, that we, the church, need to be concerned about the holistic man, not just his or her soul. Jesus seems to declare social responsibility is a necessary response of God's people. If we are sensitive to the hurts of our fellow human beings and proceed to alleviate the pains and hurts, we are positioned to inherit the kingdom of God and to become his sheep on the right. Loving those, loving those for whom Jesus gave his life, particularly those who are undervalued and underprivileged is a primary expression of our love of God and of our experience of God's love for us. We must give something of ourselves, something of our worth, something of our comfort, our sweat and tears, just the way Christ did for us. But my brothers and sisters, this is what it means to be a Christian. A true disciple for Christ. We love those who probably cannot give anything in return. Yeah, we love those who may not look like us, dress like us, drive what we drive, live where we live, and have what we have. We give, we support, we love, and we care. We do it as an expression of the love of God, not to be recognized by men. And Jesus tells the parable of the sheep and the goats. He is seeking to convey the importance of serving and meeting the needs of the laws, the least, the lonely, the left out, and the left behind. He told them, whatever you did for, for one of the, of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Can I get real with this? Can I get real with this? When you helped out Pookie and Ray Ray, you helped out me. When you assisted Grandma and them, you assisted me. When you supported Pork Chop and Little Skippy, you supported me. Now, Christ's ministry on earth, Christ's ministry on earth was about establishing a whole new system of justice, a kingdom drastically different from any kingdom the world had ever seen. A new social structure based on the God-given dignity 
and valued of every human being, a person of worth. The parable of the sheep and goats is a description of, of that new kingdom. And it is also a challenge to begin making disciples who will carry out that mission and making it a living reality. But my brothers and sisters, the mission is still the same. So the question is, what is, what is this mission? First of all, first of all, number one, it's a mission that reaches upward. Secondly, it's a mission that reaches inward. And thirdly and finally, it's a mission that reaches outward. Let's look at it. It's a mission that reaches upward. See, before we reach inward and outward, we need to reach upward to connect to Christ. It's a mission that reaches inward. See, the inward mission is meeting the needs of a local membership. It's a mission that reaches outward. See, the outward mission, the outward mission model is reaching those on the outside who do not know Jesus Christ. Both inward and outward mission is to love, lift, and liberate. It's a mandate to restore and reconcile. The subjects for inward and outward missions are the helpless, the lost, the least, the left behind, the left out, the wounded, the weary, the disenfranchised, the marginalized, the faithless, the hopeless, the neglected, the rejected, the unsaved, and any other groups of people that are crying out, please save me. But our mission is still the same. Our mission is to save somebody. It's our mission to, to believe in somebody, comfort somebody, encourage somebody, help somebody, inspire somebody, love somebody, lift somebody, pray for somebody, assist somebody, support somebody, teach somebody, care for somebody. Jesus, the Son of God, came down through 40 and two generations to accomplish a universal mission to save humanity. The word says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. His mission was centered around a hill called the Calvary. This mission was to die for our sins. This mission was to raise up a generation. But I thank God this morning that the mission did not end on Calvary, but there was another mission that was designed for what Sunday morning? When he got it with all power in his hand, that was the mission to give you and I eternal life. So my brothers and sisters, the mission is still the same. Whatever you do, never abort the mission. Don't neglect the mission. Don't diss the mission, but embrace the mission. The mission is still the same to help somebody along the way. So my brothers and sisters, we thank God for you. We want you to continue your mission. The mission is still the same. Don't neglect it. Don't reject it. Don't abort it. But embrace it. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die for us. The ultimate mission to save a dying humanity. God bless you. Come on, church. Let's thank God for a phenomenal word. Thank you, Dr. Shepherd. Come on, let's thank God for the message and let's thank God for the messenger. May you, God, pour back into this your noble vessel as you used him mightily to be a blessing to Shiloh, family and friends. In Jesus' name, prepare him, anoint him afresh for whatever it is you have in store and assign him to that he would do it in such a manner as what you've allowed him to be a blessing to us might he continue to be a blessing to others in jesus name amen now there's somebody who's viewing here today that god's been speaking to you this entire time uh even as you got out of bed this morning even started your day god prepared this moment an opportunity for you to receive him he's been pursuing you he, he desires to have a love relationship with you that's real and personal and here is that invitation i want to extend it to you I want to offer you that opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with me, but here is that moment that I just want to engage and connect with what is already at work in you. God is calling you. God is drawing you. Just simply receive him and say yes. 
Here I am, Lord. Forgive me, cleanse me, wash me, fill me with your presence and seal me with your Holy Spirit. God, I yield and I surrender. I give my life to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, Romans 10 and 9, that if you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the grave, you shall be saved. If that's you today, come on, just share with us. Follow this address that's on the screen to our website and let us know who you are. Share with us what the Lord is doing in your life, even right now, if it's by way of salvation or you've been looking for a place you can unite with and connect and call it your Holy Ghost headquarters, your home. We would welcome you. We indeed welcome you right now. Become one of our virtual members. I know we're not in the building, but doesn't mean we're not the church. We are still the church just because we're not in the building. Don't need the building to be the church because we are the church. And so you can be a part of Shallow Baptist Church right now. Hallelujah. We celebrate you. All of those who've made decisions to have that relationship with God by way of Jesus Christ, we celebrate you. And then those of you who are already saved and have already been walking in that relationship and, and God just confirmed some things and even affirmed some things for you to be united with this ministry, the Shallow Baptist Church ministry, we celebrate you today. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you all for sharing with us on this first Sunday. I pray so y'all turn your clocks back. Got that extra hour. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God, God is so good. Again, to all of our leaders, Reverend Whitfield, a Whitfield family, to all of those who serve under that particular area of ministry, the mission and outreach, all the teams that fall in the area, we do indeed thank you. All the volunteers, all the servant leaders, God bless you for a major, mighty, strong work that you're allowing the Lord to do in and through your lives. Because of you, we've been able to do the work that we do, local and abroad other countries and even here in northern virginia other states and so we thank god for even the reach that god is able to do through the ministries here at shallow baptist church love you guys continue to pray for those who are standing in the need of prayer those who are in the season of bereavement those who are sick and shut in we ask god's divine favor we ask his presence his power his healing even right now in jesus name continue to enjoy the rest of the day love you guys see you on wednesday night and make sure tuesday you do what's most important if you have not done so already, make sure you get out and vote. It's our right to vote. And we need to exercise our right to vote. Our lives matter. Our votes matter. And let's make a difference by participating in this general election right now. Tuesday, get out and vote. God bless you. Love y'all. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord watch over and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, <laughs>